Welcome fellow bookworms to Tibra's Den. My name is Whitney and we are doing another Throwback Thursday. This is one that has been on my shelf for a very long time. I wanted to say I started reading it around like fourth, fifth grade, maybe even earlier than that. I really don't know. Um, I've had it for as long as I can remember anyway. So uh, one I really enjoy is called Sweetgrass and it is by Jan Hudson. I've actually revisited this throughout my lifetime. I've, you know, read it in my teens, in my 20s. Uh, so it's one that I have enjoyed one time or another. Um, and really excited to talk to you about this one. Before I do though, just want to remind everybody we do our book of the month discussions every Monday. We are just finishing up The Ring and then we're going to be starting Obsidian Butterfly by Laurel K. Hamilton. I hope you'll join me for that if you would like to. The breakdown of the chapters and links where you can pick up the book are in the description below. Um, that one is definitely 18 plus, but I hope you will join me as we read that one and discuss it. We also do a weekly read every Wednesday. I choose one of the shorter books on my shelf and just read it, you know, within one week. And then I give my thoughts the following Wednesday. Right now we're doing different spooky thriller type reads. Um, so hopefully you've been following along as we read those. And then we also do a series Saturday. Right now we are reading the Dresden Files series and we are on book four of that. So really been enjoying those. And then bonus videos pop up here and there. So if you're not already, please subscribe and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on anything. Um, and yeah, let's go ahead and talk about Sweetgrass. So this book follows Sweetgrass, who is from the Blackfoot Native American tribe. She is 15 years old and she wants to get married. Like that's the main focus of the book is her wanting to get married and her father just feeling like she's too immature to be married. She's the oldest of her friends. Um, she has like one friend who's 13 who gets married um, and things like that. So she feels like she's an like, old maid at this point and she just really wants to get married and she's really getting really frustrated. Um, and on top of that, she wants to marry her sweetheart who is Eagle's son. Uh, so it just follows her. It follows her their you know, going to their summer meetup, they, all the tribes meet up, um, and then they kind of separate for the winter. Excuse the growling, the dogs are playing, um, and they've been like that all morning, so. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so they're, they're meeting up, and then they separate for the winter, and during the winter, um, they get hit with smallpox, uh, and so sweet gas really, really has to step up and care for everybody. Her father had gone out to find food and everybody else in the tent is sick. So she really has to, to step it up. And so it's kind of a coming of age story as well, uh, which, you know, I'm, I'm a sucker for those. Um, I absolutely love coming of age stories and I just really enjoy the premise of this one. I think even though it's really, you know, small and simple, I think one of the reasons I find it so enjoyable is that it does have that historic aspect to it. So the characters are fictional, but the events that took place are real. And so I'm going to go ahead and read the author's note on that. It says the people in the story are not historical personages, but fictional creations. The events, however, are based on the written records of the Blackfoot Indians during the winter of 1837 to 1838. The Blackfoots, also known as Sik Sitka, occupied the territory that is now northern Montana and southern and south central Alberta, Canada. Um, and so yeah, so that's you know the premise of the book. Uh, and I don't know, it's just it's really simply written and it is aimed for children. Um, so it was really easy for me to read, you know, even in elementary school. But like I said, I think the story behind it has enough substance. Um, to, to keep me enjoying it even now and it's just something that I really loved and it you know showcases kind of the family dynamic in the tribe um you kind of that cultural aspect you know obviously 15 and 13 you know is absurdly young you know for for us as as we are but you know in the culture like I said sweet grass is 15 and that's considered older to be unmarried um, and then just the aspect, like, her friend who is 13 and gets married, she didn't get to get marry her sweetheart. Like, she had to marry 
um, an older man and she was one of his younger wives. Like he had multiple wives. And again, that's not something we see in our own culture. So um, just kind of taking a look at that, you know, I think one reason I was drawn to it, uh, we have Native American blood. Uh, we were, ch or well, how far back? I think it was my mom's great-grandfather was full-blood Cherokee. Uh, if I'm remembering right, <laughs> it might be great, great, but, um, we do have full Cherokee blood down the line. And so that's something my mom has always been interested in is, is that part of our heritage. Um, and so I think, you know, that might be one of the reasons I was so drawn to this book as well. Um, but one part I liked, uh, that I'm going to go ahead and read here is Sweetgrass. She is kind of spoiled and she doesn't, you know get that the full implications of getting married and being the they call it the sits besides beside him wife um which is essentially a first wife um and as her father tells her like you don't get help like it's just you and if you don't do the things you need to do your husband's not gonna have anything to trade um and such and make sure you know that there's food and everything like that uh, and so she's kind of complaining because her brother otter you know gets all this attention and she does all this work and gets no attention and so she's talking to her grandmother um, and it's this is the grandmother talking uh, and it says what is the use of all of otter's buffalo if you and I do not dry his meat Yet no one will praise us. Some things must be done without sweet words. And I just think that kind of really captures, you know, the immaturity of sweet grass um, and not realizing that, you know, like sometimes you just have to do the work. You're not always going to be praised. It's not about that. It's about the work and the results of that, not about the sweet words, you know. And so I really, I really enjoyed her grandmother, too. Um... You know, her grandmother kind of spoiled her as well, but her grandmother was also very honest with her. Like I said, I just like the whole dynamic of it and the coming of age and her, you know, really growing up during when the smallpox hit because she's having to take care of her family or her father's not there and she has to take care of her family um, and really had to grow up and, and figure it out. Like she had nobody else to fall back on. Um, and... You know, it's just, it's an enjoyable story. It's really sweet, simple, to the point, but really enjoyable as well. There's a certain depth, depth there, and I, like I said, I like that historical aspect that's there as well. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys here. I hope uh, if you've never read that, you you might try to check it out from your library or something. Or if you have kids, I would strongly encourage you to pick this up and read it with them. Um, it's good to talk about, you know, different cultures and especially um about native american histories and such so hope you will do that but otherwise i'm gonna leave you guys here happy reading everyone bye